Okay, I look at this and right away I see that this is definitely going to be a quotient rule. Now, you ought to get where you can find the square root of anything very quickly. What I always tell students to do is first, let's just write it in the Leibniz notation, is go ahead and do it in steps, meaning that you know this means x to the one-half power. And now I'm going to bring the power down and then subtract 1. And I always write 1 as a fraction so I can subtract it. And then I have x to the negative one-half. If I bring the negative one-half to the bottom, oops, sorry, that's a one-half, and then I get this. So what I tell students, instead of going through all those steps every single time, just write that on a formula sheet because it makes it very quick and easy to find derivatives when you have a square root. So with the quotient rule, this says that I am going to take the square root of what's the square root. I'm going to take the, it's early. I haven't had all my coffee yet and it's Alexa's fault. Um, I'm going to take the derivative of what's on top. So the four just stays out front. The derivative of square, square root of X right there. One over two square roots of X. The derivative of eight, of course, is a constant, which is zero. And then the quotient rule says then leave the bottom alone, 6 square roots of x minus 9, and then minus leave the top alone, minus 8, and then take the derivative of the bottom. Well, it will be the same thing, 6 square root is 1 over 2 square roots of x, and then of course, um, the, the derivative of 9 is 0. And then the quotient rule says to square the bottom. All right, so now it's just algebra time. So let's see if I can bring that up a little bit. And so I am just simply going to distribute both of these and see what happens. So if I distribute this first one, I'm going to get 24 square roots of x over, so I did 6 times square roots of x times 4, over 2 square roots of x. And then now I'll distribute the 9, so minus 36 over 2 square roots of x. And my doggy barking. And then I'm going to remember to distribute the negative as well. So I do the first one, which is minus 6 times 4, 24 square roots of x over 2 square roots of x. Looky, looky, looky. Those are going to cancel. And then don't forget the negative and the negative, a positive, and then 48 over 2 square roots of x. And all of this, let me write it this way, is over the bottom squared. You never square out the bottom unless you think there is something you might could cancel. Okay, so you always just leave, just leave the bottom alone. All right, so as I mentioned, that, that cancels. And then from here, I could see that, uh, get my, my colors back. I can see that 2 would go into 36 18 times, 2 would go into 48 24 times, and so these actually are the same fractions, right, because they both have the square root of x on the bottom, so 24 minus 18 would be 6, and then square root of x, and then... I have still the bottom squared. Now in WebWorks, how I put this in there so you can actually see it, is notice I put the numerator in parentheses, so 6 square roots of x, 
And then I put the denominator in parentheses because the whole quantity is squared and 6 square root of x minus 9. And that's the correct answer because it says right there. It's correct. Good job, Cindy.